Apparently the New York Times headquarters has a little bed bug problem, which shouldn't be surprising since everywhere liberals work eventually becomes uninhabitable. Many saw the irony in the situation, including Twitter user Dave Karpf, who happens to be an associate professor at George Washington University, who tweeted out a joke that New York Times columnist Brett Stevens was the bed bug. Later that day, the tweet got a grand total of nine likes and zero retweets, and nobody really noticed it or cared. That is, until the New York Times columnist emailed the Twitter user, complaining that he hurt his feelings. Dear Dr. Karp, somebody just pointed out a tweet you wrote about me, calling me a bed bug. I'm often amazed at the things supposedly decent people are prepared to say about other people, people they've never met on Twitter. I think you've set a new standard. I would welcome the opportunity for you to come to my home, meet my wife and kids, talk to us for a few minutes, and then call me a bed bug to my face. That would take some genuine courage and intellectual integrity on your part. I promise to be courteous no matter what you have to say. Maybe it'll make you feel better about yourself. Please consider this a standing invitation. You are more than welcome to bring your significant other. Cordially, Brett Stevens. Now, most people thought that the alleged email was satire and that the Twitter user wrote it himself as part of the joke. But Mr. Stevens soon appeared on MSNBC and confirmed that it was, in fact, real. Yesterday, um, a professor at George Washington University described me as a bed bug or a metaphorical bed bug, uh, just in the context of the New York Times having a, a bed bug problem in our building. And I think that kind of rhetoric is, is dehumanizing and totally unacceptable, no matter where, where it comes from. So I wrote him a personal email. I didn't go to Twitter. I wrote him a, a, a personal email, which I think was, was, was very uh, uh, civil, saying that I didn't appreciate it, that I would welcome him to come to my home in New York, meet, uh, meet with my family, and see if he would call me a bed bug to uh, my face. Because a lot of things people say on social media aren't the things they're really prepared to say in one-on-one -on -one interactions. I don't know what planet this guy's living on, but I could only dream that one of the supposed journalists I make fun of would invite me over to say it to their face. Fredo, Brian, I'm talking to you. Soon the hashtag BrettBug started trending, and so he deleted his account and then headed off to a safe space in his bed bug infested office. You know, I'm a little jealous of this professor because I haven't had any luck this year getting into a Twitter beef with anybody. As some of you may know, I've had some pretty fun back and forths over the last few years with people like Jake Tapeworm at CNN, Alyssa Milano, Rosie O'Donnell, Mark Cuban, comedian Jay Moore, and others. But now it appears that everybody's on to me because they're just ignoring me. When I tried to start a beef with OJ Simpson, as soon as he joined, instead of responding to me, he just blocked me. And speaking of the New York Times, they're upset that Trump supporters have recently begun looking through the past tweets of journalists who work for mainstream media outlets and are uncovering that many of them have tweeted things that would get us normal folks suspended or banned from social media and fired from our jobs. A loose network of conservative operatives allied with the White House is pursuing what they say will be an aggressive operation to discredit news organizations deemed hostile to the president by publicizing damaging information about the supposed journalists. They certainly don't like getting a taste of their own medicine because this is exactly the same tactic that they've been using against pro-Trump social media personalities, going through old tweets, trying to find something that they said 10 years ago so they can get us demonetized or suspended. Bernie Sanders playing around with a punching bag yesterday at the Muhammad Ali Center in Louisville, Kentucky is the perfect illustration of everything that the liberals do. It just ends up coming back to bite them. Someone else who's not having a good week is former one-term congressman Joe Walsh, who just announced that he's going to be running for president against Trump as a Republican. I just found out that I lost my national radio show. So, so that's gone. But I figured that might happen, John. You lost it. Why? Uh, I don't know why. I just got a notice before I came in the studio. Um, I'm running for president. I oppose this president. Most of my listeners support the president. It's not an easy thing to do to be in conservative talk radio and oppose this president. I, I knew that, John, when I made the announcement tomorrow, uh, yesterday that it could be in jeopardy. I'm sorry to tell you, Joe, but I'll give you about 30 days before your campaign is canceled, too. I'm so tired of winning, I just can't take it anymore. So to celebrate, I've released my new Mount Trumpmore shirt. 
order yours from my online store at markdice.com or click the link in the description below and like all of my shirts it is available in a t-shirt long sleeve and a hoodie and a whole bunch of different colors as well and your purchase helps keep this channel going so head on over to markdice.com or click the link in the description below and check them out